some of you may be waiting for that breakthrough where you become a CEO, where you become a wife, a husband, and you're like, oh my God, I can't wait. You cannot wait though. Please keep doing something now, actually. Keep doing something now. Be diligent in the very little things you have to do. All right, guys, it's beautiful to be here again. I want to say a big thank you for clicking on this YouTube video. If this is your first time here, I want to, to subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell so that when next I post a video, YouTube is going to notify you that a video is up and you'll be part of what we are doing right here. But I want to say a very special thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube channel. I mean, it's great to know that you are doing this. I mean, we have over 100 and... 80 subscribers i mean that's a lot and i want to say thank you to my 180 subscribers you guys are the best i mean you guys are the best thank you so much all right so without wasting much of your time let's delve right into what we have to discuss but before i do that let me go ahead to introduce myself to you in case you're meeting me for the first time all right my name is amichi victor okk and i'm the anchor voice of eden all right so today we'll be talking about five life tests that every one of us must go through five life tests that every one of us must go through the truth is this your test is different depending on your season or your dealings with god mm -hmm. god knows us better than we know ourselves so if he's testing you in a particular area then it means he needs you to improve in that particular area so the reason why he's not testing the other person in this area he's testing you is maybe because the person has gotten a lot of um, stamina or the person is strong or the person has grown in that area and the person doesn't need to be tested all right to go to the next class all right so i hope you understand what i'm talking about so but for today's video we can't talk about the entire life that everyone has to go through no we only have to talk about the life test of Joseph, all right? You see, I discovered that Peter's test was entirely different from that of Judas. Judas was tested when he had to do with money. Peter was tested in love. You know, Jesus would ask him severally, lovest thou me more than this? Or before the cock crowed three times, you would have denied me three times. I mean, that was a test of love. But for Joseph's case, I looked at the life of Joseph and noticed that for every point in Joseph's life, he was tested in five different areas. Wow, five different areas. And I want us to look at those areas quickly. Let me say this. Everything that must be trusted must first be tested. If before they trust the car, before they send the car out there for buyers to get, the first test is, they test the horsepower, they test the brakes, they test everything. In fact, when you take your car to the mechanic, for you to trust that the mechanic has done a good job, you really have to test the car, test the brakes, test the speed, and see how best the car is functioning now that the guy has fixed it, alright? So, everything that must be tested, or must be trusted rather, must be tested. Your faith must be tested if it must be trusted. Your love must be tested if it must be trusted trusted your relationship must be tested if it must be trusted you must be tested if your boss will trust you or if he will employ and trust you yes he has to put you through a test that's what an interview is for they test your ability to see how capable or how fit you are for that job and the same thing works with God. Let me say this also. If what God has promised you is yet to come to pass, you most likely are in the test. I'll say that again. If what God has promised you is yet to come to pass, you most likely are in a season of testing. And you need to understand that. You really need to understand it. Joseph went through five tests, like I said, and we will be looking at those five tests today. All right, so let's jump into the first test Joseph went through is what I would call the test of time. The test of time develops your patience. You see, Joseph had a dream and that dream took a long time before it came to pass. The same thing applied with Abraham. God promised him a son and it took a time span of about 25 years before the son came to pass. The same thing applied with Joseph. Joseph, God gave him a dream and promised that he's going to be on top and his brothers, his family were going to bow to him. And it took a long time before that dream actually came to pass. So God gave Joseph the test of time. And what the test of time does, like I said, is that it develops your patience. God's tests do not only reveal something, but it refines something. It doesn't only reveal that you are impatient, but it refines your patience. It refines your life and makes you even more patient. So the time God tests you and you fail in that test, for example, the test didn't come to make you fail. 
it came to make you pass. Let me say this. The difference between a test and a temptation is not the situation where you find yourself. No, it's the intent, the motive, who sent it. All right. So a temptation is sent for you to fail. A test, in the other hand, is sent for you to pass. So a temptation and a test are one and the same thing. All right. In a test, you find a temptation. In a temptation, you find a test. But the intent of both of them is what separates them from each other. Like I said, a test is meant for you to pass, not fail, but a temptation is meant for you to fail. So every time God tests you, in his mind, you have passed the test already. That is why that situation came through, not for you to fail. I need to say this. God cannot develop patience in you if he does not let you wait for things. One of the hardest problem, one of the most difficult things a lot of us have is that we are unable to wait for things. I was talking to one of my friends and he said, the Lord is teaching me how to be patient. That means the Lord is teaching him to wait for things. Sometimes we want to pray and see our prayer and see the things happen instantly. We just want a breakthrough now, now, now. There was a time in, in my city here where I live just, <laughs> they, they opened a new church and they named it um, God of now, now. Like your miracle is now, now. Anything you want is now, now. God will give you now, now. And I knew, I knew it was just only a little time before they would fade out. And, and they actually did. But my point is this. God sometimes wants to build patience in you and he would permit you to wait for things. He wouldn't just give you things the moment you ask for it. He would say, wait for it. Wait for it. Your answer is on the way. Wait for it. You need to learn to wait. And that was what Joseph did. Joseph waited for the promise to come to pass. That, my friend, is a test of time. The next test I feel or I, I understand that Joseph had to go through is a test of faith. All right, a test of faith. The test of faith purges all your doubts and feelings. You need to understand that it's not just about your, your feelings. You know, the Bible says, he who asks, doubting not in his heart, will receive from God. But if you ask and your heart is full of doubt, you can never receive anything from God. Anything from God. And Joseph went through the test of faith. He went through those seasons when his heart would want to doubt. I, I believe he went through those seasons where his heart would want to doubt, but he would hold on to the word of God or to the word God has said to him. He was not depending on his feelings. He was not depending on what he saw around him. He was depending only on the word of God and the dream he had. You know, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph only twice in Joseph's life. Only twice. When he was sold as a slave and when he was thrown into prison unjustly. That was the only two times the Bible said the Lord was with Joseph. I now know clearly that Joseph actually had to go through the test of faith. God develops our faith by withdrawing his manifest presence. Where you can't feel him around you, where you don't even think he's there, you almost want to doubt. You almost don't feel like God is there. Your feeling is telling you otherwise, but you hold on to the word of God. That, my friend, is a test of faith. You see, you can't get the fulfillment of God's promises in your life until God develops your faith by trial. You can't get the fulfillment of God's promises upon your life until he develops your faith by trial. Trial looks like the promise is not coming to pass. Everything around you looks contrary to what the word of God has said. Do you hold on to the word of God or do you look for an alternate means? Joseph went through that test. Your faith, real faith can never be destroyed by trial. It can only be purified. All right. Real faith can never be destroyed by trial. It can only be purified by trial. So every time God permits a trial, every time God sends a test, God sends a trial, it is to purify your faith so that the fulfillment of his promises can come to pass in your life. So let's jump to the third test Joseph went through is the test of purity. Mm -hmm. I can say this way that purity chooses a prison of restriction. It's the pathway through the prison to the palace. You see, the time Joseph determined to stay pure, especially when Potiphar's wife came to um, drag him to bed with her and he decided to stay pure. The next thing that happened was that he was in prison. And then after that, he went into the palace. Purity is you choosing a prison of restriction, telling yourself, I restrict myself from doing certain things. That is an imprisonment. You see, a lot of relationships have failed because of lack of purity. I'm telling you, if you don't choose to imprison yourself now, you can't get into the palace. Your relationship cannot reach the stage where it's going to get into a palace. A lot of relationships, like I said, are dead today because of lack of purity. I'm telling you the truth. So we need to go through that test. Samson, we know Samson in scripture. I really don't like talking about his story, but I mean, Samson had to go through the test of purity also. 
And, and we could tell that he failed it. But Joseph went through that test of purity and he passed. Every young person must, tell me, every young person must go through the test of purity. In your relationship with, with the opposite sex, in your relationship with your friend, you must go through the test of purity. You must decide not to go to certain sites. You must decide not to do certain things in your closet. You must decide not to think certain thoughts. You must imprison your mind. Keep it, lock it up. Say you can't assess these things. You can't go through this way. You can't think certain things. You must tell yourself you cannot do certain things because you are imprisonment. For now, oh, for now, I mean, when you get married, you can um, be intimate with your wife, but you can't think certain thoughts about somebody else. I mean, because you are still restricted to certain things. So purity is a test every young person, every man, every woman, young, yeah, most especially young, have to go through. All right. So the next test, which is the fourth test that Joseph had to go through, is what I call the test of forgiveness. You cannot be fruitful if you are not forgiven. I'm telling you the truth. Joseph would not have gotten to the throne if he had grudges in his heart against his brothers. He wouldn't have. From the very first day, Joseph said, no, I'm going to let my brothers go. This is not them. This is the pathway to the palace. So God just used them. Or the devil thought he was going to kill my dream. He didn't know they were all in the big picture playing what God has already ordained out for me. You see? So Joseph had to forgive them. I'll say this again. You cannot be fruitful if you are not forgiven. Forgiveness doesn't mean you minimize or overlook what was done against you. No. It just means that you are saying to yourself, this person may have had control over your past, but the person doesn't have control over your future. You have to learn to own what is happening next, irrespective of what was done to you in the past. So you don't overlook it. You don't minimize it. I know a lot of people do that. They overlook what was done to them or they minimize it and say, well, it's nothing. And deep down, they think they have forgiven, but they are still hurting. Whenever you touch that area, they don't want to even go there because the pain is still there. What they did was that they overlooked it, they minimized it, or they didn't even pay attention to it. If it is hurting, it's okay. Embrace the hurt, but tell yourself, that it was in the past and the person may have done this to me in the past, but now I have control over my future. Somebody said it this way, forgiveness is you letting a prisoner free and discovering that that prisoner was you. So we always need to ask God to help us forgive. Whatever was done to you in the past, if you hold on to it, you are holding yourself from being fruitful. I said forgiveness, being fruitful is tied to forgiving. So if you don't let go, you are stopping yourself from being fruitful. People will hurt you. I'm telling you, in fact, the pathway to the palace, you will go through a lot of hurt, especially hurt from people you love. How can you even imagine how Joseph went through knowing that it was his brothers who sold him? Yes. Where you feel rejection from the people who you expect to be there for you, who you expect to stand by you. They are the ones who are now rejecting you. You see, it's so hurtful. It's so painful. But Joseph had to go through that and he also forgave them. You know, sometimes it's easy to forgive someone you don't even care about. <laughs> but when it is someone who means so much to you, I mean, it's it's painful. I've, I've, I've gotten my share of that. It's really painful. But I wouldn't be here. Truth, truthfully, I would not be here today if I hadn't forgiven the person. Yes. So you need to learn to do that also. All right. You need to learn to pass the test of forgiveness. Now, the fifth and the final test I want to talk about that Joseph had to go through is the test of diligence. You don't have to wait for a new season before you do your best in the season that you are in. No, you don't have to wait for a new season. Imagine if Joseph had just waited for the time where the prophecy would come to pass, where the dream would come to pass, and he was just waiting for the palace, and he wasn't doing his best in the prison or in Potiphar's house or anywhere he found himself. He would have been a wreck. In fact, he wouldn't have even gotten to the palace. So sometimes we wait for the destination, not knowing that the journey is more important than the destination. It is the journey that prepares us for the just destination. So some of you may be waiting for that breakthrough where you become a CEO, where you become a wife, a husband, and you're like, oh my God, I can't wait. You cannot wait though. Please keep doing something now, actually. Keep doing something now. Be diligent in the very little things you have to do. Or right, I put your best in those very little areas you find yourself in. Don't um, wait for the D-Day. <laughs> the birthday, the Christmas. No, don't wait for that day. Every day before that is a preparation for the day you would arrive at. There was a very beautiful quote Lester Sumra made and he said, I never did any great thing for God. I just did something every day. Yes, you have to do something every day. 
Don't wait for that day where you will hold a crusade and a million people will come up or a million people will show up. No, start from that little room where you have five people, where you have two people. Give your best. I learned something from T.D. Jakes too. He said, always come out giving your best, not waiting for the the day where you have to put up a big performance. That's when you give your best. No, in those little, little areas too, always come out presenting your best. The destination disease causes many people not to do anything with the present. The disease of there's a destination. Let me just wait for that destination. It causes a lot of us not to do anything with the present. And it's not a good place to be. So Joseph had to go through this test of diligence. And Joseph was diligent at every point. In fact, he was in the prison and the best in the prison. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Really, that's really amazing. He was in the prison and he was the best. Ah, up until he got to the palace. And there was none that could handle it except Joseph. So we had to look at five tests Joseph had to go through. I think one of these days we'll look at another five tests Peter had to go through or five tests uh, Jesus had to go through. But the test differs because your journey and your season with God differs. All right. So the first test I said it was a test of time. And I said Joseph also went through the test of faith and he went through the test of purity and the test of forgiveness. Then he also went through the test of of diligence all right so thank you if you find this video helpful please subscribe to my youtube channel leave a comment leave a comment on this um, video leave a comment also share this video with your friends and um, turn on the notification bell just in case you have subscribed so that when next i post the video you would see thank you so much for doing this with me uh, it was an amazing time god bless you and i'll see you in the next video shalom